Now I'd like to show you how you can add a multi-section component to your user database, specifically the CA3083 NP array. I have my SPICE model ready to go, and then I also have this schematic symbol for the transistor array. Go up to Tools and start up the component wizard. Begin by putting in the component name, CA3083. I already have one of these in my library and I do not want to overwrite it. So I'm going to add demo to finish this off for the purpose of this video. But for your own purposes, just go ahead and type in CA3083. The function is a bipolar junction transistor. It's an NPN style and it's an array. We're gonna go ahead and do the model and the footprint. Let's begin by finding the footprint. The first time you do this, you'll be in your master database. There's an overwhelming number of footprints to look for. Let's go ahead and use the filter to find the one that we need. Say add row and choose footprint. For the operator, I'll say it starts with dip 16. That stands for dual inline package with 16 pins. Here's the version we need right on top, so I'll double click that. This is a multi-section component. It's got a total of five transistors, but I'm actually gonna add in a sixth section to account for the substrate pin. Each of the transistors has three pins. So I'll do that for the first five sections. And then for the last section, I'll change that to only one pin for a total of 16 pins to match DIP16. I'm going to use the existing symbol from the 2222 transistor. So make sure you're selecting from the master database as I showed, and then just start typing in 2N and you should find it right there at the top. 2N 2222A symbol. I then want to copy that to all of the remaining sections. We'll take that through sections E and then leave section F blank. And you can confirm as you scroll through the sections here that we do in fact have that symbol. And here's the last one for the substrate. I'm going to actually backtrack and get a better name for that one. I want to call this S for substrate. And unfortunately, we lose the work just accomplished on that symbol. So let me re redo that real fast. All right, moving on. We can go with the default settings for all of the sections where we now see the names for the, the various symbols. For the very last one, I'm going to change this to a no connect. At this point, I need to associate my symbol pin names with their corresponding locations on the DIP16 package. Here's my first section, transistor number one, which is known as uh, the three names here. The emitter is on pin 15. Let me call that back up. The collector is on pin one. and the base is on pin 16. I think you get the idea. I'm gonna go ahead and take a quick time out and finish off the rest of these assignments. So I'll begin with number two, which maps to those three locations. And I'll just go ahead and fill that in for the rest. All right, that takes care of all five transistors. Then we have this extra pin called substrate. Substrate is pin number five. And I'll select number five. All right, that step is done. 
At this point, I can bring up the SPICE model that we want to associate with each of the transistors. So we have the model for the CA3083. Again, I don't want to overwrite the model I already have, so I'm going to use the phrase demo after that. I'll do a swipe of that, control A and control C to then paste in the text right here. And I can save a little bit of effort by then copying to the remaining sections B through E. And just confirm that the model is in place. And finally, we've got this substrate here. We'll just go ahead and leave that empty. Now you'll see some pop-ups and, and warnings, and, and that's, that's okay. We can just go ahead and forge through those. And that one's okay also. Now we need to associate symbol names with the model nodes. So we need to follow the uh, listing here where the collector is model node 1, base is model node 2, and the emitter is model node 3. And we need to repeat that for each of the remaining sections D, uh, B through B through E. Again, I'm kind of skipping in ahead in time here a little bit. I've, I've gone ahead and done that for each of these sections. For the substrate, I'm going to go ahead and change this to a no connect. I'm going to expand the user database, find the transistors, and then you can either create that family if it doesn't already exist or, or use the one that's there. This is the NPN. And I also want to place the component when I'm done. At this point, I've finished creating the component. It's in my library, and now I can start to place it as I would other parts. Because this is a multi-section part, I can bring out each of those individual transistors. And they get labeled as all the same package U1, but we see the sections A through E. Incidentally, if you'd like to be able to see these on your schematic, this is how you do it. We can show the symbol properties and the uh, foot, footprint pin names. Well, symbol pin names, actually. Let me zoom in, on, zoom in on this. And we can confirm that the collector is in the right spot, as is the base and the emitter. Got the correct pin numbers here. And I'd, I'd encourage you to do this for your own model. Just step through the remaining devices here and just make sure that the pin numbers are in fact correct. Those pin numbers are really handy when you're looking at the schematic and you're trying to then wire that up on your breadboard. Finally, how do you place this from scratch? So we'll go out to Place Component and we then go to the User Database select the appropriate family, which is NPN. And again, here's my version that I made earlier. Here's the one that I just made, the uh, demo version. Go ahead and place the A component. And we're all set. So if you follow it along, you've now got this model in your uh, user database and you're ready to go.